Hey everyone, Jefferson Graham is here with Frederick Van Johnson from This Week in Photo. Today we're talking all about the iPhone. I'm going to click this button and just say, hey Frederick, how you doing? Hey, hey Jefferson, how's it going? Thanks for having me on. Man. Uh, thanks for thanks for doing this. Both Frederick and I are speaking at the upcoming uh, iPhone photography conference from Kelby One, which is next Tuesday, right? It is next the, Tuesday. Yeah, the, I'm, I'm excited. Are you excited? The, I am very excited, the 27th and 28th. I am doing beginning iPhone photography, all those great hidden menu items that nobody knows what they are, and uh, explaining that, and then also talking on the flip side about special effects. But you are talking about AI, which is probably the hottest topic in the world right now. So tell everybody what you're doing. Man. Man, this is this is going to be really, really interesting um, because the well, first of all, AI, right? Everyone knows. I know you got to get that. Yeah. In there. Um, yeah. First of all, AI is is the topic du jour, right? Everyone's talking about it. Some people are scared of it. This week's t episode of This Week in Photo, the podcast, I've got Joel Robeson on with Alistair Jolly. And we're talking about Joel Robeson is a compositing artist. And we're talking about how compositing are embracing or rejecting AI. So it's there's many, many, many conversations going on. One conversation that I haven't heard much from uh, or about is iPhone, right? And mobile. And how does that relate from a content creation perspective? How does that relate to um, you know the the world that we're in you know this whole this whole photography existence which is kind of largely being tilted towards mobile with these supercomputers we have in our pockets so what happens when you take that supercomputer and you add the some ai capability capabilities to um i can tell you what the talk's going to be about you want to hear the gist yeah. of the talk or give us, you know what? Give us let, the me, gist. let me read let me let me read the description i wrote for the talk with okay. the help of AI, of course. So here's right. the, the topic. The title of it is AI powered storytelling, crafting fictional characters and worlds, crafting fictional characters and worlds with AI powered storytelling. So the, the here's the paragraph and then I'll explain it. Mm -hmm. um, iPhone shooters will learn how they can leverage AI tools to create characters, voices, backgrounds, etc., for fictional stories, all using their phone. You'll see examples where photography meets AI generated elements to create compelling standalone episodic or long form narratives that blend reality with imagination. Right? So what does all that mean? That's a lot of marketing speak. What does that mean? So we're going to, this is, this is a new kind of we embrace you. This isn't just a, Hey everybody, I'm Frederick. Let me, this is what I'm going to teach you. Let me show you what I've done. You know, let me walk you through the steps. And at the end, let me tell you what I taught you. Great. I do those all the time. This one is a little bit different in that we are going to create something from scratch that has never been seen before. We're going to write a story. We're going to narrate that story. We're going to illustrate that story. We're going to have conversations with that world all using our mobile device. All using our mobile device. So, yeah. So, it's, it's going to be exciting. And it's exciting for me because I'm approaching this as a new way of presenting content. Like, almost a, a, a narrative, not episodic, but a narrative storytelling way of presenting educational content. Where instead of, like I said, instead of the traditional PowerPoint, keynote, whatever, we are actually going to do something real world together. And it will have, here's the kicker, it will have a science fiction kind of spin to it, i.e. it's hard to explain in person, but just think, just think I'm, I am, not that I'm a, a Doc Brown, you know Doc Brown, right? The, Certainly. Doc from, uh, from Russell, Adobe. Russell, Russell, Russell Preston Brown. Russell, Russell Preston Brown is the master of this stuff, but when you embody a character and teach people through that character, I am not embodying a character in this like he does, you know, the, the, the mad scientist character that he, that he plays. I'm not doing that. This is more of I want to pretend or make the assumption that certain facts about our world are true. 
and then we're going to pr proceed down that road. Here, here's the, here's the. Here's okay, the, let uh, me just the, stop you for one second. Uh, let me yeah. just stop you for one second. Roy said your volume is low. I have it up all the way. Now, are you? Is your mic nearby? Is your mic nearby? Right here. Okay. Yeah, keep, keep, is it Roadcaster? Are you going through Roadcaster or something? No, I'm going through uh, ATEM Mini Pro as I normally. Can can, can you can you adjust the volume at all? Can you up it? Uh, well, let me try. Well, you continue talking, and I'll try that. Yes, uh, Roy, you let us know if this gets any better, because it sounds fine to me from where I am through my headphones. And you sound fine to me in my ears as well. Okay. Yeah, everything's good on this side, Jefferson. Okay, you're up all the way. So um, just continue, and Roy will let us know. Okay. Um, we'll, okay. we'll just put in, we'll put in closed captions, right, for the replay. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, let's, let's see the replay. Yeah, we'll see. Um, just real quick. Uh, uh, Victor, that, but, Victor uh, says, Victor says that he can hear us both clearly. There you go. Thank you, Victor. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So, so anyway, are you so, doing mid journey? Yeah. Are you doing mid journey? Uh, or what? I can't, I can't oh. tell you all that. No, so mm -hmm. no, I, I am not doing mid journey using, uh, well, one of the tools that I'll show is Leonardo. Have you heard of that one? No. Leo, Leonardo.ai. Leonardo, that's a that's a little teaser. Leonardo.ai is a is a generative AI tool that is think think Midjourney. Probably what the next version of Midjourney will be when they add in the web interface to it. It's already there, so it's it's a really powerful, beautiful tool that allows you to control many aspects of your whatever you're trying to render and apply different models to it and experiment and all that stuff. But we're gonna we're gonna do it mobile. And we're gonna have a good time with it. So, and this will all be live. So they'll, they're, I don't know if they're gonna allow me to do a Q and A segment to this. Um, if they, if they do, that will be awesome because of, there's gonna be a ton of questions. But you know, if people have questions, they can always reach me, you know, offline or through Twip, et cetera. Okay. So, so, so the P, the Peanut Gallery says that that you're low compared to me. So I just turned me down a little bit. Maybe that would make okay. it better for some of them. Um, because I don't know what else to do. Now, I do have a roadcaster here, but I believe that uh, I don't think you're on a separate channel in the roadcaster. Do you know the roadcaster at all? Uh, I don't have one. I'm familiar with it, though. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Okay. Say a few words. I'm just going to click some buttons here. A few words. I'm just going to click some buttons here. Yeah. A few words. I'm just going to click some buttons here. Nope. Nothing changed. Nothing. No, nope. nothing. But uh, but you sound great yeah, to I'm me. I'm looking at my levels okay. here. I'm looking at my levels in ATIM. I'm looking at my levels on the screen. Uh, you know, I this yeah. is what I do. So yeah, it's, it's levels look out. good here too. So anyway, so yeah. AI. Uh, this is what time is it on Tuesday? Oh, I have to look. Yeah, just look at the schedule. Okay, Kelby One Live dot com. Yeah. Beyond that, you're also doing a panel discussion with Scott and Eric on the future of photography. Right? Can you believe it? Believe yeah. it? Can you believe it? We started that conversation when I was down in Florida uh, recording a class with them, and I had the chance to to be on with them, you know, on the on the grid. Right. And uh, we we this was, I think, and I'm gonna I'm gonna hold their toes to the fire on this because I remember having early conversations with them and trying to explain about AI and how you know you should probably pay attention to it. You know, you don't have to love it. But you should probably pay attention to what's going on. And now, you know, it's uh, it's coming to fruition. But yeah, the future, like in the future in the context of AI, of course, but also in the context of how phones, as you know, are getting smarter and smarter and better and better, uh, inching their way towards the the mirrorless and DS DSLR worlds. You know, are they ever going to eat it? Probably not because of physics, but there's a whole heck of a lot of stuff that we can do today that we couldn't do five years ago using just that little, the little piece of glass and aluminum in our pocket. So yeah, we're gonna talk about that and, and try to put some reality around it and uh, you know, just have a, have a lucid adult conversation about the state of mobile photography and the perception of mobile photography, which that's the other side. You could have the greatest iPhone in the world that runs circles around whatever big honking camera you have. But <laughs> if you're trying to do professional work with it and you show up at a, a job with just your iPhone, which is the same as your client, you know, 
it's a that's a tough sell. So it's the it's the theater of it as well that we have to get through, which I think attrition will probably take care of. But you know, <laughs> so we're still gonna talk about it. I haven't had the nerve to show up to a shoot yet, a professional paid shoot, just using the iPhone because I think they would laugh me out of the room. But uh, but I certainly could handle it. It would be okay yeah. uh, for for uh, half of it. Not not anywhere I needed a flash. Forget about it, you know. I was the gonna flash. say it depends on what you're shooting. It depends on yeah. what you're shooting. You're doing landscapes, yeah. You're doing like just regular portraits, yeah. It can handle that. But sports, wildlife, you know, those kinds of more taxing kind of uh, genres, probably not ready for prime time yet. Yeah, I shot a party last night, and you know, in a dark room at a restaurant. It's not ready for that. Not ready, not ready, not ready. But we're getting there. I mean, did you think we'd be here two years ago? Where mm. what you can do with your phone? No. Yeah, yeah. No. We're so living in I, science fiction, Jefferson. Yeah. It's science so fiction. <laughs> my special effects that I'll be talking about are my favorite. Some of my favorite features on the phone that most people don't really make use of, which is slow mo, time lapse, live photos. Um, panorama, you, uh, people do it a little bit, but I'll be going in depth on you know some of my favorite tips and tricks. Which ones of those do you use the most, Frederick? I would say um, I don't I don't do a lot of that stuff. A lot of special effects. I'm more of a you know creative composer type person yeah. uh, or photographer. But if I had to pick one, and if you went if you sorted my camera roll by you know the different types of photos in there, long exposures would be yep. you know using live the live photo yeah. and also using an, an app that I, I have called longer yeah so an app called longer even longer that lets you even longer. longer even longer yeah even longer yeah even thank yeah. you even longer i use that one and i also use an app called focus f o c o s on the iphone have you are you familiar with that one yeah uh huh uh -huh. Yeah, focus is fantastic. It's 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 magic, literally magic in terms of the the bokeh control that it gives you over the images that you take, or or even relighting because it, you know it can reconstruct a three D layered version of your scene, and within that you can place lights in there to change different aspects. And this is all on the phone. Like this is like this is professional level science fiction stuff that you can do with your thumb while you're waiting for your dentist to call you right it's crazy <laughs> the uh, long exposure that frederick's m mentioning is a feature in live photos it's a special effect in live photos that um that will you know if you take a picture of, of the ocean for for instance you'll, you'll turn it into uh, you know silky beautiful long exposure water but i also use long exposure to do a lot of things first of all to open up people's eyes when they're closed in a photo. Oh, interesting. Okay. okay. To uh, make people disappear from a photo that stepped into my shot. To make cars streak. To make cars disappear. You can do so many fun things, and I'll be showing off some of that stuff in the Kelpie class. Yeah, it's math, right? I mean, there's there are some things that I want to see Apple do that I think they can do with live live photos, or is it live photos or live pictures? I live photos live photos. Um, I did this tutorial many years ago about the median command in Photoshop. And the, the tutorial was about basically removing people or crowds from busy scenes using the median tool mm -hmm. and layer stacks. And that's what the phone is basically doing with just a click now. There was a whole tutorial about, oh, run this command and put it in a layer stack and then do this and then do that and all this. And now it's literally just you know, pull down a pull down a menu item. Um, what I'd like to see is that feature, that median command, or, or the ability to remove people from scenes added in to the yeah. iPhone. So I nice. put my camera on a tripod, take a picture of you know uh, Machu Picchu with tourists all over it, and have them go away. Perfect. And then you know, let me edit that final shot. It's coming. It's coming. Viewers, we're going to take questions in a second, um, but before we do, Frederick, for those who don't know you, and they should, yeah. this week in photo has been ten years, something like that, so, something Twelve. a long time. Twelve years. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So what is it? So this week in photo is it's a podcast, obviously, that we we cover all kinds of topics, everything related to photography. Sometimes not directly related. You can find it at thisweekinphoto.com, photo.com. I am the host of the show, and uh, like Jefferson said, we've been around for yeah uh, the better part of twelve years. The show has been running, 
Um, a year and a half ago, about 18, 19 months ago, the show was acquired by Smug Mug. So I am now part of Smug Mug and the podcast is a part of Smug Mug. Um, proudly, you know, of a better company to be acquired by. But, you know, and I get to stretch my wings a little bit now. Yeah, that's what it's all about. We'll be, be, we'll be branching out more, maybe with Twip into um, more dedicated streams that relate to other things other than photography, more broadly, like on content. Like I want to talk more about storytelling and the tools that we use to tell stories versus focusing on one tool, which is a camera, right? So yeah, yeah photographers can choose to pick up a camera to tell a story. You can choose to pick up a microphone to tell a story. You can choose to pick up a pencil and a pen, a piece of paper. You can tell stories with animation, with sound, narrative, spoken. There's all kinds of things we can do now. And the cool thing about it is everyone, for the most part, because they have one of these, can consume your content and you could make the majority of your content on the device that it will be consumed on. So that's a, it's kind of a irresistible proposition for a storyteller. So I have a follow up about Smug Mug and Twip, but before I ask, yeah. Sheila says, could you ask Frederick to mention his app again, Focus? So I think she wants just a little bit more info on what it is and uh, yeah. what it will do. Yeah. Yeah, uh, let me, let me bring up the I want to show you the icon here and Jefferson I'll send you the link to it but it's it's called focus f o c o s weird spelling f o c o s the icon is just two circle dots kind of like the Flickr logo but one black and one white and um yeah what it what it does is it allows you I'm not going to do it justice explaining it because it's a it's a really deep app but easy to use it lets you control the bokeh or the focus in images after they were taken, whether it, they were taken with an iPhone that has LiDAR and all the, all the magic or just a regular photo. It's able to discern images, not as good as it would if it you know, had the, the depth data, but it can do that. But what happens is you can take a photo of a scene. Let's say we took a photo of you know, downtown San Francisco. Or let's say the Embarcadero, Jefferson. Took a photo let's say Red's Java the, House. Red's Java. Yeah, house. Red, yeah, 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 yeah. That's foreshadowing. Um, what what you can do is change the focal plane in there. What's in focus? What's not in focus? You can change the blades on the aperture, the simulated aperture that you're using to take the photo, thereby affecting the bloom or the star pattern on the you know the the point light sources in the scene. So you're doing a night shot. So you can change that. You can change the type of camera that you're simulating. And there's a bunch in there and different lenses, obviously. But there's there's even a, a lens baby in there that you can mm. simulate. And, you know, the lens baby lens that you can simulate within your iPhone and go do those types of shots with your iPhone. Or you can say, you know, one day I want to get that 85 one two, you know, whatever. You can yeah. throw that yeah. virtually yeah. on your camera and go shoot with it and then change the bokeh later. So yeah, it's it's crazy what they can do. I I feel like those features will be added into camera, the camera app inside of inside of uh, the iPhone soon. Like yeah. maybe Sheila's, not the full suite. Yeah, Sheila says she had spelled the name wrong. So by you yeah. spelling it, yeah. she was able to find it. How has Twip changed since Smugmug uh, acquired it? It hasn't changed much to date. It hasn't changed much on the surface. Uh, in the background, I can tell you what's changed is the the architecture that TWIP is running on is much more robust than it's ever been, which gives us a platform for growth because there will be some growth that I can't talk about now, but in the future you'll see you know, some growth on the TWIP side. Um, it has changed internally in that we are, we are structuring or looking picking my words because i can't disclose exactly what's going to happen but uh we're we're restructuring and planning to relaunch this week in photo with a brand new mark with a brand new look to the website a brand new like everything like the music on the website or the the podcast all the things even even the length of the show will be adjusted uh, adding different components to what we deliver in the feed. Right now, it's one-on-one -on -one interviews, uh, going back to roundtable type discussions. Hopefully, Jefferson, you'll come on the show from time to time. Love to. Love um, to. Yeah, roundtable, one-on-ones, 
uh, some product reviews will start showing up and live streams as well. Plus we'll be leading into community a lot more, uh, both our private community that we run on the Circle platform, as well as our, you know, substantial Flickr group that This Week in Photo has. So all that stuff is kind of gelling together to make this thing go from, you know, is uh, it, from like a really tough bodybuilder into a Godzilla, <laughs> right? So, right, and I'm that's what I, that was the reason I wanted to do, I wanted to be acquired was to, to work with people that have ideas different than my own and have, you know, just that, that energy that you get when you bounce ideas off of people versus me developing and building and hosting and doing all that stuff by myself and hoping people like it. Now I can do it with a group of other people that love photography at least as much as I do and have different ideas about what the, the site could be. So yeah, it's great. It's been great so far. Best decision, best decision ever, almost. Not the best one. The best one was, you know, my minion that's running around, but <laughs> but this one was good. This is a good one. Well, decision. shows shows as great as ever. By the way, one of the great photographers from Porto, Portugal, Jose Manuel Santos saying hi. So we're going to say hi to him, and uh, thank hey, you hey. for tuning in. Um, speaking of photography, speaking of Smug Mug, they also own a company called Flickr. Flickr is now 20 years old. Flickr is having a big birthday bash on Saturday in San Francisco. Tell everybody about it. Yeah, it's exciting. And would you, can you believe it? They asked me to lead the photo walk. How, like, how, and, yeah, dude, like back in the day, like let's call it what, 10, 15 years ago, maybe even 20 years ago, Back in the day, I remember Flickr as like, like for photographers, it was like the operating system for photographers. Everybody's on Flickr. That's where you put your images. It's just, of course, Flickr. And I, I never in a million years thought I would have anything to do with that company, right? It's, just, it's like, you know, like thinking that, oh, I'm going to go have dinner with my favorite celebrity, you know, it's like, you know, and then when they asked me to lead the photo, you know, I'm part of the company, obviously, because Smug Mug owns Flickr and This Week in Photo now. When they asked me to lead, I was like, me? You want me to lead that? Okay, <laughs> sure. Yeah. So, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to start on the Embarcadero in San Francisco. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with San Francisco, the Embarcadero is the street that runs along the bay or along the, it's where all the, the piers are in San Francisco. Yeah. The waterfront. Yeah, thank you. It's where the waterfront is very, it's part of it's very touristy, part of it's very hip, all of it's very scenic. And um, we're going to start at one end close to the you know, semi close to the Bay Bridge, a place called Red's Java House. It's a, I mean, you, you go there, you're like, really, you're gonna start here? It looks kind of, it looks kind of like, uh, like retro, run down -ish. retro, yes, retro. But it's not. I went in there because I was scouting down there. I went in there and I, you know, I talked to the folks down there. We're going again tomorrow to do some scouting. Uh, just that place just has such a rich history. Is part of San Francisco. The food is good. Uh, you know, it, it, I had their signature burger that a lot of famous chefs have had when they went there, you know, so I did that and I, then I did the photo walk. But yeah, so we're going to start, we're going to start at Red's Java House and we'll, Jefferson, you'll share the link with all the details, yeah. start times yeah. and all that, I'm mm -hmm. sure. But yeah, so Red's Java House and then we'll meander walking uh, feet all the way down to Pier 23. Uh, there's a place called Pier 23 Restaurant and Bar, which I know Jefferson has probably been to many, many times. Uh, so we'll go in there for some closing remarks from me and from the the CEO of Flickr. I'm sorry, the C well, yeah, the CEO of Flickr as well as the CEO of Smug Mug are going to take the stage and just deliver some remarks about State of the Union, be you know maybe a little nostalgia about where things have been, and then that's it. Then we'll uh, then we'll break, and that's our photo walk. So. Yeah, so I'm excited. It's going to be fun. 10, oh, 10, 30, there'll be 10, prizes. 30. Oh, prizes. Okay. There, well, there'll be giveaways, not prizes. There'll be giveaways. So, um, yeah, uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to say, but there may be sweatshirts available. There may be T-shirts. There may be hats. I'm not sure about the hats. Um, and some other surprise goodies to commemorate the birthday of the goodness that is Flickr. And we have great weather, supposedly. At least it's not supposed yeah. to rain. Any idea how many people you think are expected to be there? Oh, excuse me. Um, I have no idea. I have no idea. We've got a couple well, of the, RSVP okay, lists Okay, there's coming. two people, two people, you and me. Yeah, that's okay. all we need. 
That's, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh, my friend <laughs> yeah, Josh I, is coming. I'm anticipating. Yeah. I'm anticipating. You know, not a gigantic crowd. I hope it's not going to be too gigantic because you know, San Francisco. Um, but uh, I would probably guess maybe 100, 150. Okay. You know, something okay. like that. Okay. That's quite so a could, crowd walking down way. the barco. Put it this way, I I, uh, I just took delivery of this yesterday. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Yeah, you can see it. See it? <laughs> I can't really tell what we're looking at. It's a white piece of paper with a lens. Is it a filter? No, that that is a bullhorn, my friend. Bullhorn. Oh, okay, <laughs> <Yes>. very good. Okay. <laughs> you know. So I'll have that on standby in case the crowd gets too big and nobody can hear me. Okay, so. Flickr was really popular. Then it wasn't. It was taken over by Yahoo, and they let it fall yep. apart. Smugma yep. came in and bought it and has really worked hard at reviving it. For those who haven't used Flickr in a while or who have never used it, fill them in. Yeah, Flickr is a different kind of animal, right? So what the, the, it's a photo-sharing site at the end of the day, right? So the, and you may think, oh, well, we have Instagram, we got Facebook, we've got any number of places where we can share our photos. Flickr started it all, right? Flickr started, like, I wouldn't, maybe someone can correct me and say, no, before Flickr, there was MySpace, whatever. But Flickr, from my standpoint as a photographer, was the, was the big bang of photo sharing sites, right? And it set the tone of what excellence should be and what photographers ex should expect. But one of the things that Flickr does and excels in is it is all about photography unapologetically it's about photography for for the people that care about photography not just people that just want to see pretty pictures it's for photographers like when you upload an image it will show you the metadata from that image if you choose to have that displayed you can choose to have that displayed to your to the people that are following you or not, but you can search on metadata. So you could say, yeah, show me all the photos on Flickr that were shot with an iPhone 14, or show me everything that was shot with a Nikon Z9. Boom, you'll get them all, or combinations of things. Everything shot on a Nikon Z9 with a 50 mil lens. I wanna see all that, boom, you can see it. So those kind of things you can't do on these other networks, um, which is great, and that's what Flickr's about, but the main thing Flickr's about is community. It's all about community. It's all about bringing people coalesce around a certain kind of photography into a group, share images in that group, have discussions about that kind of photography in a group and, you know, get better. That's what it's all about. And the, uh, you know, the group nature, I think, is a lot. A lot of that is what's missing in this kind of never ending I call it the never-ending toilet paper roll <laughs> of, of images that we have to look at all day, every day, and just scrolling. Oh, that's great. Oh, nice shot. Oh, that was a good picture. Flickr is more of a, it's more of a, you know, I look forward to going to Flickr. I look forward to going in there and hanging out and, you know, sharing images and having these little micro conversations. And whatever the kind of photography that you're in, you're, you're probably going to find a group for it on Flickr, right? Whatever you're into. Oh, I like, I like taking... Like building models uh, and, and making miniature dioramas and photographing it. Well, there's probably 400 groups of people that do that kind of thing in there. Because Flickr's been around so long, yeah, it's probably got your kind of photography. <laughs> there's probably a bunch of people in there that like your kind of photography. So, yeah. It's, yeah, it's so, cool. so Instagram is probably the number one photo sharing site. And yeah. if you go there, it's Reels. It's stories, it's local news, local news like broadcast TV showing weird things, pe pe uh, the horse being pulled out of the the uh, the sand and stuff like that. Yeah. Very little about right. photography. Very little about right. photos. Yeah, that's yeah. what's cool yeah. about Flickr. Yeah. It's yeah. about photography. Shift, the, yeah. Yeah. It's about photography, and they made that shift. I mean, you get a little video as well, um, but they made that shift uh, a couple of years ago. Instagram did where they, they were very public about their shift away from photography and into shorts as a way to kind of stave off the TikTok juggernaut, right? So they kind of had to make that move. It was either stay true to photography and serve a, the, a limited small market, right? Or go the TikTok direction and explode like they did and remain and compete with those guys. But the, the, the decision obviously was to go the TikTok direction and the casualties of that decision were photographers that were relying on Instagram for, you know, the, that's their platform of choice for sharing. Um, 
I think I can't speak to it. Maybe we'll learn tomorrow when the when when the guys get up on stage and talk to it. But I feel like you know, there's been a, a kind of a relook at Flickr from okay, you know. It's been here all along, right? Like the Wizard of Oz. You've had the courage all along, and now it's here. So, yeah, fun stuff, man. Okay, yeah. so I encourage folks to get in there and play with it. Play with Flickr and come tomorrow. Come, is it tomorrow? No, it's Saturday. Come, come join us on Saturday. Saturday uh, Red's Java House, 1030. Do people need to sign up or just show up? You can just show up. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of RSVP lists around that are just there kind of to give us a an idea of how many people are coming and how many, you know, how many things to bring with us. But yeah, we're not going to turn anybody away. Just show up, show up at Red's Java house and hang out, get some stuff, take some pictures, have some conversations with people. Right. 1030. 10 yep. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And photo walks, Jefferson, this is the last thing on that. You know, Flickr, Flickr was the, uh, you know, they kind of invented photo walks. <laughs> it was that's where photo walks came from. Was the, the whole idea of Flickr, and now, you know, successful shows like yours, Photo Walks TV, uh, Kelby has worldwide photo walks. He still right. does that big event. People do photo walks all the time. It just makes sense to do them. You know, how do you how do you take something that is an insular solo sport and add real world community to it? Photo walks. Right. Yeah, it's kind of fun to walk around with other people and take pictures and see what they see and what you see. And, and it, you know, it's it just you know, the uh, enthusiasm uh, kind of rubs off on you. Yeah, yeah so, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, my next Photo Walks TV episode is a virtual photo walk of Venice Beach. So uh, there we go. Oh, very cool. So virtual yeah. photo walk, I mean, we can come with you virtually. That's right. <laughs> While I'm walking with you in real life on video, it will it'll show you what you what you would see if you were walking down the street. So that's right. Oh, do you stream that? Do you stream that live? No, no, no. It's a, you know, it's a video. Yeah. Uh, okay. But okay. yeah, but that's what's going on. Um, I've taken up enough of your time. Come join us on Saturday. Remind everybody how to listen to your show. Easy uh, on your podcast directory of choice whether it be spotify google apple etc not, not google for... not google not google not, they don't do podcasts well, anymore no they got out of the podcast business youtube when? music how do i not know that <laughs> this is a few weeks ago youtube music is where you will hear it. okay we are yes. everywhere we this week in photo has been around forever and it is on all the directories so just search for this week in photo or twip which is the acronym for it then uh, you'll find it. Or alternatively, just go to thisweekinphoto.com where you know, you'll find a way to subscribe to the podcast on your pod network of choice or you know, the, uh, the newsletter that we put out so you can be notified of whatever we publish, all kinds of stuff. It all roads lead to thisweekinphoto.com. And if you wanna join our community where we do photo critiques every other week, you know, live Zoom sessions and mixers every Friday night, all the things, you can head over to community.thisweekinphoto.com and that will take you to a landing page that tells you all about our little private community. Okay, Frederick Van Johnson, thanks for being here today. And Thank you. Uh, a pleasure. Every, everybody listening to the nice show. Put on my nice shirt for you, Jefferson. See and it's really nice good. I, and I hope you wear <laughs> something nice on Saturday too, right? I will. I will. Yeah. Okay. I'll see you on Saturday. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Bye-bye. Thanks, Jefferson.